Moving on now to Australia, where people there stage a pro-refugee march calling for an end to Canberra's offshore detention of asylum seekers. Demonstrators rally through the streets of Sydney, waving banners in support of asylum seekers. They also held pictures of refugees who lost their lives while waiting in detention camps in Papua New Guinea's Manus Island or on Nauru. Protesters call for the closure of detention centers and accepting asylum seekers. So we fight to close the detention centers on Manus and Nauru, but we fight in that process to bring them here. Well, the protest comes on the fifth anniversary of the reintroduction of anti-refugee policies in Australia. There were similar rallies in other Australian cities as well. In 2013, Canberra signed deals with the Pacific nations and declared that anyone arriving by boat had no chance of being settled in Australia. Rights groups and the United Nations slammed Australia for turning its back on vulnerable people as horrific reports of abuse, suicide, and despondency filter out of its camps. Well, turning to Ontario, joined by Mr. Jason Unruh, he is a political commentator and analyst. Thanks so much for being with us. Seth, will your take on this? We're seeing more and more people take to the streets in Australia. Why has Canberra uh, chosen such a hard line when it comes to these refugees? Well, I think it's a difficult situation. I think that the government of Australia is currently under uh, influence by a lot of right wing forces that have a very xenophobic uh, kind of mentality towards the population. I mean, many of them have the view of some kind of uh, it's, it's often described as third world hordes coming into their countries and taking over and somehow supposed to destroy society. I mean, we do hear this uh, frequently from a very uh, right-wing reactionary figures, uh, regardless of the Western country that it happens to come from. I think that this is very much a policy that may have more implications than we're seeing on the surface. I think there might be more behind this than we know. I mean, it's it's simply unquestionable that this is a human rights violation. In fact, Australia has had some of the worst detentions of uh, illegal immigrants uh, that has been seen uh, in many decades of these uh, suicides, these horrible treatments uh, that are not being overseen by any kind of international regulatory body, especially when we consider Australia is, I mean, it's, it's all very, uh, very hypocritical when we consider how much Australia has been involved in the politics of those particular countries, uh, Papua New Guinea and uh, East Timor. Uh, there has been great interference by the Australian government over many decades, which has sought to keep those countries under their power. I mean, they have a very long colonial legacy uh, with those uh, particular places. And for them to deny them the right to come to Australia to get away from the problems that Australia itself caused is tremendously hi hi hypocritical. This is this is a very clear violation of rights. And it's a very good thing that much of the population inside of Australia, to what degree, I don't know, I don't know the exact numbers, but many of them are standing up and saying that this is not right. You cannot indefinitely detain people based on what country they come from, or in, in many cases, simply because of the, of the language they speak or the color of their skin. The Australian population seems to be, at least some section of it is uh, more forward thinking, more progressive in this regard, that these people, and they are people, uh, despite the treatment by the government, certainly deserve many of the human rights that are afforded to many others. All right, and on that note, appreciate you being with us out of Ontario. Mr. Jason Unruhi, political commentator and analyst.